we um, I'd just like to go through a little bit of um, participation reminders. Um, if you click on your mural um, on the right hand side, if you click on the outline and you go to tile number two, anything shared will be at your own discretion. The session is being recorded and screenshots will be taken. If you choose to turn your camera off, that's entirely up to you. Please respect others' privacy by not taking a personal recording or screenshot. Please mute if you are not talking to reduce background noise. And feel free to ask questions in the chat anytime. So we'll get started by doing our check-in, which is tile number three. And I thought I would do a fun little question this morning and start by saying, complete this sentence. I just won the lottery. If you're looking for me tomorrow, I'll be dot, dot, dot. So you're welcome to put a sticky note on the check-in board. And I also invite you to share verbally what your response might be. Um, I'll pick up before I'll talk before I write. Um, Mum and I were watching a movie last night where they had those, um, those little huts that were on the water attached to an island. And I'm not quite, I know that that is somewhere around the world. I don't know where it is, but that's where we'll be uh, with my mum. Yeah. Peace, back. Nice. I think that's Bora Bora, isn't it? <laughs> that sounds pretty nice, Mish. I'll pick up. I'd probably be in a similar place, Mick. But I think that my life would probably look the same. I'd still be doing, you know, I, um, I care a lot about, you know, the work I'm doing now and I would take all my family and my dog and all of that. I'd just be in a more beautiful location. <laughs> yeah. Buy an island, maybe. I'd buy the whole of Bora Bora. <laughs> Who knows? I'll pick up the piece. Um, we, I feel like we did win the lottery and we bought a farm and that's where I'll be with everyone, like everyone says, and enjoying the beautiful hills and sensational surroundings with a few chickens now because I can get them. <laughs> Peace back. There we go. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I said I'd probably be in similar kind of circumstance out in nature somewhere, um, comfortably out in nature. But I think what I'd probably start doing is building tiny homes um, and helping to supply uh, um, some of our, our um, Indigenous activists here are using tiny homes on their territory because um, properties can't be changed, Indigenous properties can't be changed if somebody's living on them and a lot of their, their territory isn't lived on and they don't want to live on it, but they can move a tiny home on it and it's considered a permanent residence. So. Um, that, then that property can't be altered, but the government can't take over and alter it. So I think I'd start building a bunch of tiny homes that would eventually hopefully also be potentially permanent residents for people. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, Julie, Julie, I'll just put the mural mural link in the chat for you. Hi, Julie. And we're just doing the checkout question, Julie. Um, huh? So um, a few of us have already checked in. So. Um, Please have a look at the question and join us. No Sorry, Shelley. That's okay. I um, I need to breathe. <laughs> uh, I, I'll if I won the lottery, I'd come join Linda and do, and do that work as well because I I love the work, all the work I do. I'm really passionate about. It. I don't want to quit. I'm 63 and I don't see quitting. So I just want to find other things to do work around. But I can't go anywhere because I'm taking care of my friend's cats right now and that would just not be right. <laughs> so. I'll go next. Um, <clears throat> same, I think we're all very similar to our responses and mine would have to be the beach. I always feel better when I'm near the beach and buying an island, but I've also had a dream about um, living in a place like that, but having a retreat for people who are at risk of homelessness and vulnerable people to just come and be spoiled, like a bit of a, um, you know, have it open to people who can afford it and then close it down for months at a time and just support vulnerable people, people recovering from illness, people at risk of homelessness, just to give them some support and some a real injection of healthy food and living and support. So that would be my dream. Thanks, Sharon. I'll pick up. Um, I'm going to need to have at least four weeks in Fiji just to defragment myself and have a rest. But then I'd love to create an accessible community. 
So um, that's going to be a lot of work. So I'm going to need a rest beforehand. Peace back. Yeah, I'll pick up. <clears throat> um, we have a, um, a client in Pete's retreat and STA at the moment. And yeah, so everything that you've been saying is, you know, what this um, person has been experiencing, not having choice of living and choice of how he wants to live his life. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's really important to be able to give people the choice of how they want to live, where they want to live, not saying this is how you have to live. We have to put you in this little box because this is all that you can afford. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think putting, you know, in, in, in the, 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 well, the client, the climate that is, I think everywhere in Australia, but especially here in Noosa, no one can afford rentals here. So how do these people with disabilities afford, you know, they're basically living in a cat box. So it's really, I mean, it's so hard to be inspiring for, you know, this particular person and going, it's okay, you can do it. We just need to get a budget. But then you look at it and you go like, he's got $10 left, you know, and that's before he buys food. So, yep, a million dollars. <laughs> yep, a lottery. Yep, sounds awesome. <laughs> Peace back. Um, <clears throat> I'll change my... Um, I'll change my mindset in a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize, Julie. It's so good. It's very similar to what Linda said, actually, about having the tiny homes, you know, on um, on on some land, um, you know, whether they're traditional owners or not, you know, everyone needs to have a home, you know, um, that's accessible and affordable. Yeah, and they're expected to live with, you know, three or four other people that they don't know, don't like and have support yeah. workers that don't you know necessarily give a shit <laughs> or have the time to you know implement and support all of them individually impossible mm. anyway thanks julie have we all checked in mm. fantastic thanks everyone there's a bit of a um common theme happening there isn't there mm. we need a holiday and then we need to get stuck in and do some amazing community work um so i'm going to introduce you to our storyteller today um and uh that's linda perry um from bella canada so linda i'll invite you to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and linda's going to be talking to us about how do we create equal and respectful relationships or partnerships for everyone involved? So over to you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm from the west coast of Canada. I live in a small community, well, growing every day, Langley, which is about an hour out of Vancouver. Um, and Vela is a tiny nonprofit that supports um, person-centered services for people um, that are self-generated either by the individual themselves or their family and friends. So we do something called microboards, which I won't get into today. Um, and also individualized funding, helping people set up um, the, the, the plans and hopes that they have through direct funded um, supports. Doesn't mean we always get what we need in the way of funding, but there's certainly a lot of creativity in trying to make sure that we create what people are hoping for and, and looking for. I was the executive director at Vela for most of its existence. I've just retired in June. And like Shelley talks about, I can't imagine not working. It's still a passion. So I'm right now the um, special projects coordinator. So I'm working on a number of kind of fun things uh, within Vela and I've got till the end of March to get hopefully at least one or two of them launched. And then I'm kind of, I don't know, I just know I'll be doing something that's still related to the work, which is kind of fun and exciting. I'm looking forward to what's next. Um, so I thought what I do is tell stories, obviously, because that's what I'm supposed to do, tell a story. What's happening right now in my brain is I've suddenly changed gears on what story because of the way the conversation has flown. So I'm, I'm going to, and this one I haven't really explored because it's new, um, but you guys really got me thinking and I, I, um, I'm going to launch into something that I think may be a little bit challenging for all of us, but I think it's worth the story. So um, we were talking earlier for folks that weren't on the earlier part of the call about COVID because of course it's on everybody's mind and that we all have different points of view and um, 
how do we learn to listen to one another better and not react? And I'm living that experience right now with my dear friend, Shanti, who has had a microboard for 32 years and we've been friends for 33 years and I'm on her microboard. So basically one of my roles as her friend is to help hire staff and monitor the services and, and help train the staff, et cetera. So I'm there, that's part of my role as a friend to Shanti, I do these things. And right now I also actually spend a fair amount of time with her when we don't have staff. Um, but what's gone on is one of the, the staff people tested positive for COVID. And what's been really interesting is watching everyone's reaction to this. And when we're talking about everybody feeling valued and heard, this is a great example of, of really putting that to the test. And I realized things were getting to kind of a crescendo for everyone that is around Shanti that supports her. Everybody has a very strong opinion. Everybody, you know, some people are, are angry at the woman that got COVID and I'm going, you know, that's, that's a productive response. Um, and, and right down to people that um, are, are, there's not as many that are supporting her. And, and I really thank you, Michaela, for the pro-choice language. I much prefer that to the, the alienating language that we're still using here. Um, so there's some people that supported her that, but very few, most people were, you know, what the heck is she doing? And one staff who works in nursing. So she's, you know, we got to get PPE. And again, we got to do this, we got to that anyway. So everybody was pulling off into their corner. And I recognize that if somebody doesn't address this, if somebody doesn't say we're doing this, we're not listening to each other. Everybody's just freaking out and coming up with what they think is the best idea. And so what I did was just went and sat with my friend Shanti and, um, asked her how it feels right now and she said well everybody's tense like everybody's not her language but everybody seems really upset and so I saw it as part of listening to her to reach out to everyone else and individually have conversations first with them about are you upset like what are you upset about what what are your fears and all this because everybody's pretty adamant about their point of view and I think that 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 process opening it up to people and and making it about not let's not point fingers at each other let's just talk about what we're feeling so the woman who tested positive is devastated she lives with her father who has cancer so trying to explain to other people she's not being um, irresponsible she made a very conscious conscious decision with her family that this was their best way to go forward I also wanted to understand because she hadn't told us she hadn't gotten vaccinated which was you know, a bit of an upset for us because what the understanding was people were going to let us know if they weren't vaccinated so we could take the appropriate protocols and she didn't. So we worked that out, her and I, around how that was a disappointment for me and caused me some anxiety and and her guilt because she was feeling horrible about it. She said, yes, I realize this is a horrible mistake. She's terrified for her father, you know, and, and so everybody through that process, we all listen to each other. And I said, what we need to do is just listen. Like, don't, don't come in and tell everybody how to fix this. Let's talk about how everybody's feeling. And then once people feel heard, we can have a much more productive conversation. And it's not because there's just a lot of really upset people. I mean, my first concern was Shanti because she is vulnerable, but she's had her shots. So the first thing I said is, okay, go get tested. Everybody needs to go get tested concerned let's do it right now and also for Shanti's sake let's all go get tested which we did and um I no one else has tested positive so that immediately reduced the anxiety for everyone and then I said so now let's talk about the woman who is positive and what she's going through like let's think about that and initially there was the well you know she should have known better she's working in this field I said no she shouldn't have like she's she's not um an irresponsible person like she's she's made a choice and now is dealing with the repercussions of her choice, but we can have compassion around that. Like that's, she has very personal reasons why she's made that choice. So trying to work with everybody around, everyone feeling heard. And like I say, we're in a process because it's still happening. But what I've noticed is in this process, the, the woman who's supposed to manage things, she's kind of just gone, I can't do this right now. I have to worry, her son has had cancer. So she's terrified for him and it makes sense to me. So I said, well, how about I step in and do some of this stuff for now? And basically the whole conversation has been around, I hear you, just, I hear you. And what you're saying is valid. And what I'm noticing is by consistently doing that and not letting myself, because I believe me, I'm no saint. And Shelly will tell you, I'm fairly emotional. Um, that um, having to remind myself that right now, the biggest thing people need is to feel heard and not judged. 
And so really working on that with everyone. And what's really interesting is I keep with the person that's the senior staff, I keep saying, okay, let's be a team here. Let's do this together. I'm not asking you to do any of this stuff on your own. Let's do it together. Tell me what's going on in your life so I can figure out where I can adjust my life to make sure that's going to work for you. And then likewise with the rest of the staff. And it's hard work. But man, is it ever benefit? Everything just calmed down. Everybody's working together. Nobody's accusing anybody anything. I still got one staff that wants PPE full, full born. And I said, well, I'm going to get it for you because I understand that's a really big concern for you. But I think you probably want to talk to people before you put it on and find out what they were doing before you arrived, because you may not feel quite the same need to wear it, like just, just saying. And so she's I bought it, I bought it all. And so it's there for her. So I've heard her um, and she hasn't been in yet. And now she's talking to me about, well, you were in, bef- you're going to be in before me, right? And I said, yeah, yeah. And I promised you, I'll do what I said. I'll wipe down the counters. I'll do, you know, the whole shebang. And um, she said, okay, well, maybe I'll just wear gloves. And I said, cause she knows that, you know, Shanti's had her shots and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's really interesting to see how the whole tone has just come down and it's getting much more collegial and everybody's kind of going, okay, yeah, we don't have to react. We can, Shanti's fine. We can all just calm down and have reasonable conversations and recognize that this has been hard on everybody. And I don't just mean our circumstance, but we've had 19 months here in British Columbia of this and it's been hard on everybody. So why don't we just chill a little bit and recognize that we need to hear each other. Um, And so for me, that really demonstrates actively being in that space of respecting each other, hearing each other, and all working towards the same purpose, which is, you know, we're trying to support Shanti to have the life as normal as it can be right now, given our circumstances in British Columbia, have the life that's important to her. And we've gotten, we're now able to have conversations that are more about okay, given, you know, the circumstances in British Columbia, what, what more can we be doing so her life feels fuller? What does Shanti want to do? So we've gotten away from the, let's focus on this health and keeping everybody alive, which is an important thing. I mean, I'm not downgrading that at all, but people got their answers, they felt heard, and now we're moving back into, okay, so what matters in life for Shanti? So it's been a really good lesson for me, um, a hard one. It's not been easy, and I think that's part of um, when we're talking about respecting everybody's point of view in a circumstance, and that means everybody, that's been a long one for me to learn. I mean, I've always wanted to have the bad guy, you know, who's going to be the bad guy, who's the person that we're going to, we're going to fight with. Um, so it's a lot harder not to have a bad guy to really hear people, but boy, it sure makes a difference. Like just, I can sense, particularly from this senior staff person who's been having a hard time for a while she's relaxing and she's telling me more behind some of her choices and some of her anxieties. And so I can go, Oh, I understand that. I've felt that. And just, everybody's just, you know, really coming to a a much kinder, softer place right now. And it's, it's not easy to do in these times. So it's been a great lesson for me. And yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm not naive enough to think I'll always be able to stay here and stuff, but boy, when it works, when you're really listening to each other, each other, the, resonant hum of everything is lovely it's really neat people feel safe they feel together they feel um, understood and it's just the everything just feels so much lighter so it's been a a big a big lesson for me and it's going to be ongoing I'm not naive I'm not saying oh yeah we've got it handled now so we're all great Um, I know this is a a daily commitment to try to go back in and um, and work things out. And a lot of it is because we're so, so short staffed here in British Columbia, we are, that's why I'm spending, um, as opposed to my usual, let's just hang out <clears throat> time. I'm actually spending chunks of time with Shanti because we don't have staff. Um, and there's, and there's what tends to happen for people when everybody's stressed like that is, well, I've got an important event and I've got this. And so trying to talk all that down for people too, and going, okay, so let's start with why it's important, like like what's going on, because we all have different definitions of what's important, um, and how do we hear each other? And it's really interesting to people have stopped measuring against whose important event is more important. They've started to understand. Okay, if you're telling me this is of, of importance to you, then I'm going to listen. And that's been a huge difference. It's still short step. There's still everybody's you know all hands on deck, but people are feeling listening listened to in the process. So that's it. That's my story. So I'm hoping we can open it up and just have a conversation. You're on mute, Meredith. 
<laughs> Thanks so much for sharing that story, Linda. It's certainly um, generated a lot of um, insights, light bulb moments and deeper questions and learnings from us. We've got a, um, a board on the mural um, that's called Story Gems, which is number four if you want to click on that. And there's some great little gems in there. And you're welcome to continue to um, put sticky notes in there as we're going through this process. So um, are we going to do breakaway rooms, Mish? That'd be great. Okay. So we're going to break away into some rooms now um, in a World Cafe style. Um, are you all familiar with World Cafe? And following on from Linda's story, I'm going to invite you to continue to discuss that question about how do we create those equal and respectful relationships and partnerships with the people we work with um, in our breakaway rooms. Awesome. So we'll have 15 minutes and um, in, in your room while you're chatting, um, please uh, feel free to put your light bulb moments and pieces of gold that we'll ask you to share when you come back onto the um, first conversations board, which is element number six. Um, and you'll go off into rooms shortly. As we all go, do we have some great conversations? Yeah, I enjoyed ours. I hope the other people did too. It was great. Um, yeah. Would you like to share some of your nuggets from, from your sessions? I'll pick up. We had some really great um, conversation. I think for me, um, one thing that Linda said was when, you know, when you're at that coal phase, it becomes like, well, just take a step back and just see what you can what the key topic is and you know if there's a theme that we're all sort of trying to work on work on that find that common connection which I sometimes I think we forget I kind of know you that before but I forgot because it becomes so overwhelming just to step back and especially in what we're going through mm. and the various different views you know there we come with social justice lens most of the organizations we work or government organizations don't have that lens um trying to find that common connection and what else did we put? What was my other gem? Oh, Mike, Bron, have you got something to add to that? I think that's a really good wrap, Sharon. We were mm. having a great conversation. Yeah, I really appreciated the, the conversation. It was wonderful. Kind of, I think the difference between, uh, sorry, I'll be quick, but difference between um, theory and reality, right? Like that when you're on the ground doing the work, um, a lot of stuff that looks great on paper is not going to, it doesn't fly. And then how do we have those conversations? I think one of the biggest comp things for, for myself and I think Bron agree was food and housing are, are the most critical things we're dealing with. And we're looking for sustainable outcomes, whereas all the government meetings I've had and conversations I've been involved with, it's a ticker box, do an event, bring a sleep bus into town, that'll fix hope, homelessness and give out food parcels for five weeks, tick, 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 it's all done. What are you worried about? So I think that's been the most frustrating thing for me and how to move forward in that and change, change the way, bring sustainability and change, change the way we're working with people. Mm. I'll pick up. Um, we talked um, about being curious rather than being challenged in conversations that are intense. Um, I just finished doing a worldview course and that was the main, I mean, I got lots of things, but that was the main thing to actually, you know, to actually step back and be curious about the conversations that are being, you know, discussed, If especially if you can feel yourself starting to be challenged in your body somewhere, to actually step back and be curious. And then, yeah, it's a lot more, it's a, it, it creates and paints a whole different picture, um, you know, and, and, and you do have to sometimes physically step back and, you know, allow yourself to get into that curious space, especially when you're ready to launch in there and give it for all it's worth. But being curious is a really great, um, it's a good tool. I've, I've found it really helpful. And you can feel it in your body when you start to starting to react. You can go, oh, hang on a minute. You know, like that's just step back 
be because it's starting to, you know. Yeah, so um, I've really, yeah, I've really used that tool a lot. Um, and, yeah, we talked about, you know, really actively listening um, is a really important thing too because, um, you know, to actually actively listen, you know, have our, you know, have our mind be at peace and at rest to actively, you know, listen to what people's journey and stories is. And, you know, that builds trust and relationship because they can see we're actively listening, not ready to jump in and tell, but what about my story? Um, yeah, so, yeah, we, we sort of got very deep in that. I froze a lot in our conversation. <laughs> Michaela, you'll love it. I'm having technical issues this morning. <laughs> These back. Thanks, Julian. We were just talking about that before while we were waiting. It's um, Mercury's in retrograde, which means lots of technical issues and difficulties with listening and those sorts of things. So we're being challenged in lots of different ways at the moment. Well, thanks so much for contributing, everyone. Um, looks like there's some great little harvests on our mural board too. So what we might do now is have our second conversation. Um, and Michaela, I'll get you to put us into rooms again, please, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, you could. So you, you got another 15 minutes to get deeper into the same um, question of how do we create equal and respectful relationships and partnerships for everyone involved. Enjoy and we look forward to hearing your pieces of gold when you come back. Hey everyone, welcome back. So um, I'm going to invite um, you to have a little chat to us about your second conversation and share your pieces of gold. So Pieces in the middle, whoever would like to go first. Come on, Sharon, you can do it. <laughs> we were getting we were getting wild up in there and you I hate the way you zip us and we just disappear in the middle of this really vital conversation. <laughs> yeah, we I think our choice one is navigate the community rather than navigating the system. We want them to give us the pot of money because we've got a shitload of people that know exactly what to do to, with it and where to put it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we got really. <laughs> uh, maybe we should, I should let someone else in my team talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's no, why the internet keeps cutting me off today. You know that, don't they? It keeps freezing me because they don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> Julie, we're just passionate as you are. It's all good. And I think one thing for us was um, we talked about one thing that I'm really, really passionate about and I've always presented when I've ever been at a conference or had a voice is if we can have 24-hour um, casinos and shops, we should be able to have 24-hour mental health support and community support. Um, we work on a business model rather than a health and wellbeing model which is really frustrating. Um, and I think for me, <clears throat> we talked about yeah, navigating the community rather than the um, system. In the work I do, we see a lot of the governments now putting money towards helping people navigate the system. So another big spend of money. Um, it was great having a really good conversation with um, Julie and Shelley. And I'll let Shelley say something. Mm, I, I really enjoy listening uh, you know, there are lots of commonalities in the Northern Hemisphere, lots of differences as well, but we both, or we were, we got really jazzed about the idea of rather than having people who learn or teach us how to navigate the systems, how about learning to navigate the community was the one thing that I really want, I'm hanging on to in all of this. Yeah, it was a great conversation. Thank you both. Great, thank you. What about the next room? We're all sitting back because our conversation was about sitting back and letting other people talk. <laughs> so we're, we're walking the walk. Um, I did take a few notes and Meredith liked having things all spaced out, but ours was a bit of a trickle. So, um, yeah, we were just talking about um, how you fit into the space. If you have an opinion or you have um, passion and how you make that passion fit in um, with what everyone else's passions are or how everyone else um, views or sees the world. I'll let someone else speak for a bit though. We had such a great conversation. This is, yeah, a wonderful question. 
Um, something that stood out to me is, um, I think I think Linda said it is if I don't recognise others have a different point of view, then I'm making the people we're supporting more vulnerable because we don't really understand what could be coming at them. So, like, I guess that's just another reason why it's important to, yeah, sit back and listen and and hear varying points of view and um, open conversations. Great, thanks, Bron. Shelley's just had to leave early. Um, who else was in your room with you, Kate and Bron? Linda was in there with us. Yeah, I was just going to say, oh, I'm sorry. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was trying to get to my button. Um, yeah, and and I, I think what was really interesting, Bron, like your conversation about your, I hope you don't mind me saying, but, but your brother, right? And that's that's really cool that there's some, like his approach to things is just to, yeah, listen and pose questions that are non-threatening. They're actually more to understand. It's not from a point of view. It's from a, so not coming from, my view of my lens of the world trying to get you to explain so I understand just curious questions around why someone thinks the way they do and not so you because when we pose it from our own point of view there's going to be you know even if we don't intend it barbs in there right like we're inferring well your thinking doesn't make sense to me so you better defend it um when you come at it from a point of view of just pure curiosity you're going to ask the question or frame it very differently you're not going to make people feel like they need to defend their point of view. And I think learn a lot more by doing that. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do, um, but it's a great skill. Great, thanks, Linda. We've got some good pieces of gold there, haven't we? That's terrific. Thanks, everyone. Is there anything um, anyone else would like to add before we move on? I guess I'd just like to reiterate that skill um, of what Linda just said because um, it's certainly a practice, right, of, um, of being able to ask questions not from, not from your own agenda, not from your own perspective, just with that blank curiosity. Um, and because I've noticed recently <laughs> that sometimes, and I know that I do it too, when I'm confused, it's because they're not talking the way that I want to hear it. Um, and so rather than it being about me understanding, it's uh, more about think the way I do. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the, the states of confusion can be that too, whereas people can come across with the states of confusion about, I'm just trying to understand. Well, actually, no, you're not. Yeah. You're trying to win. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, interesting. It's a very, very subtle um, energy difference, I think. Mm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. And the only person we're fooling is ourselves. If we think we're being neutral, everybody else is hearing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's subtle. It's subtle, but very dangerous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, you can pick it up because, yeah, the, you know that people haven't actively lived. They're not actually listening to you because they've gone straight into the, you know, their interesting perspective. And then all of a sudden, you here you are defending yourself again. So yeah, that's right. I like that what you were saying, Linda. That was really good. Mm. I'm gonna yeah, because I do. I, I've got this real big thing about you know sort of um being criticized or you know you know if someone has an opinion and, and so I go straight in there to defend my you know my interesting opinion you know perspective if I feel like I'm not actually being listened to but oh I I yeah ego plays a big role in that and I can be oh, yeah. so arrogant sometimes and I don't like that you know yeah. it's like like you know in all my years of experience is kind of what's coming across right and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah 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 yeah, that's that's a great way to win people over and, and be open to your point of view. You know, mm -hmm. it's it works really well. I've certainly worked well for me for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Need a big needle to just, you know, burst your bot burst your bubble. Yeah. You know, exactly. You yeah. it, like yep. it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, just a big fat yeah. needle there and stick it yeah. in. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm grounded in now. Yeah. yeah. 
And look, I just want to acknowledge Natalie because Natalie's been trying to join these um, conversations for ages. Natalie's in Bali and it's two hours behind and it's really, really out early in the morning. Um, and we've all been meeting for a few weeks. So um, thanks for, for trying. But we're going to try the other end of the day, hey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but great, you could be here for this bit too. Thank you. Um, Meredith, I think um, I think we might be ready for a checkout, mate. Yeah. Thanks, Mish. So, yeah, if you'd like to click on the element of number eight, we're at our checkout question. And today I thought I'd ask the question, are you spring, summer, fall or winter? And please share why. Um, Nat, I'll quite I'll ha harvest for you because um, I think you're on a phone, so the mural board is a bit tricky on the phone. So I'm happy to type for you. And while I've while I'm unmuted, um, I'll I'll pick up. Spring is my favourite time of year, and we're supposed to be straight spring now, but the weather's like weird, so it doesn't actually feel like spring. I'm I'm a new beginnings person. I love you know new projects and new starting things and all of that sort of stuff um but I am feeling a little bit on the fall side because I there's lots of stuff going on in my life at the moment that I should be letting go of and I'm kind of not <laughs> so I'm hanging on um but I, yeah that'll do peace back yeah I'll figure out I can be all of those things in one day really it depends, um, but yeah, I, I, it, you know, like this sort of wave is really good. Um, yeah, you know, going out, taking a breath and bringing me back to where I need to be. But, you know, winter's joyous too. Grow grapefruit in winter, just, uh, you know, just all in putting it in perspective. Yeah, but yeah, um, I can be all of them. Thanks, Julian. Which one are you today though, or right now? The computer's been driving me today, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I could be maybe, I don't know, because I don't think any of them are bad, you know, like, so, you know, I mean, I don't see any of them as negative. I think they're all beautiful. So, you know, um, I don't think I could label um, my mood today as any of those things. But, yeah, look, I'm going to be trying to be spring. <laughs> Nice, thanks. I'll pick up. I um, it's been a long winter. I think I'm I'm the same. No, no seasons a bad season. They all come with it for a reason. I think winter's a good time to buckle down and go within, and spring's a good time to be able to come back out. And I kind of try and use the analogy of a nice deciduous tree. It loses its leaves every year and renews every time at spring comes it's always different never looks the same as it did last year um not lost a few branches along the way but it'll always bloom again <laughs> so that's um, that's my analogy for spring it's the tree coming back to life new ways of thinking and being and just step forward and keep going and see what happens new ways of just renewal that's what i'm looking for renewal beautiful thanks sharon Okay, I failed dismally working the whiteboard, I have to be honest. Um, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm right now, I'm fall, not because that's the season we're in here, but it is my favorite season because it's a time of reflection for me. It's beautiful and usually the weather's a bit unpredictable and you can get those amazing fall days that are crisp and lovely. And it, I think for me that, that that's a period of time that I really do spend um, introspectively really thinking about stuff I've learned, like today, I'll spend a fair amount of time thinking about what we've talked about and, and the tidbits that I've gotten, the little bits of gold from each of you and, and gone, that was a great thing. That was really interesting. That's got me going over here. So that's, that's where I'm at right now is that it just feels like I've been receiving gifts and, um, and I get to reflect on them. I'll pick up the pace. Um, I am quite seasonal. Um, I didn't sometimes I don't realize and Mick pointed it out for me just recently which was very um insightful and kind of her to remind me um but I do feel spring and I feel re-energized and I feel like there's new beginnings and 
fantastic things on the horizon. I feel very motivated and empowered to keep on going. So it's a good place to be and I'm very grateful. Peace back. I'll pick up. Um, yeah, uh, lately I have been feeling summer, I would say. Um, unfortunately, summer is not my favourite season of the year. It makes me a bit sort of hot and bothered and heady. Um, but after this morning's conversation, I'm feeling much more spring, more uh, motivated and new growth in the, you know, for the future. I'll pick up. I'm feeling the spring weather, which is just gorgeous and the new growth. I love that. But personally, I'm still feeling like we're still in a bit of winter. So I'm hoping I can come out of that cold zone very soon. Peace back. I, am I on? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I'm a bit the same. I feel like uh, I can be different seasons in one day. Um, things are uh, autumn like yeah just letting go of and feel like I'm coming out of a winter and yeah but I think more spring being open to new ideas and starting new projects and and things so yep thanks Natalie okay I think that's all of us now isn't it well, thank you so much um, to Linda for your beautiful story sharing and for everyone to contributing to the great stories we've heard and shared and conversations this morning. I wish you all well and have a great day and we look forward to seeing you another time. Thank you, everyone. It was lovely meeting you all. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Yeah. Enjoy your karmic. Oh, it's not me. It's Jasmine. Oh, it's Jasmine. Mm. Mm -mm. She's getting a new car. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. it was you. No, no. Oh. See you, done. Have a good one. Bye. See you now. Bye. Yeah. Bye.